Welcome back everybody to the next episode in Beginner C++ series. This is episode 11 and now that we're getting into multiple files and our compiling is going to get notably more complicated where we have to type longer and longer lines and uh, we're also getting to the point where we're going to probably start adding flags to our compiling. It's going to get a little tedious to keep typing it in our terminal so I think it's time I introduce you to a really important thing that kind of goes along with all programming and you see it really in every language everywhere and that's make files. I'm really only going to go over the very basics of it here. Make files are a whole animal on their own. But really you only need to know the basics as a programmer and as far as you want to go with it and have fun with it that's up to you. Most people don't make raw make files. They have a program like CMake or QMake or something else that builds a make file for you based on how your project's set up. But knowing how the raw make files work at least on a basic level is pretty important. They're really critical for any field of of uh, science really because you when you're crunching big numbers and running big projects you often want to do a, a lot of different things and in specific orders and repeat it and and, and stuff like that so make files allow you to do that it's just a little file called a make file I'll go ahead and make one okay so here's our here's our file browser there and I'm gonna just do the touch command and do make file and make files are named just plain old make file all lowercase you can capitalize the first M and it is the same so I think the standard is to capitalize it but lowercase is just as well and there we go it's just a plain old file called make file and as its name sort of suggests it is for making your program usually but really you can use this to run anything in your in your command line or in your terminal because really all it does is it pushes commands into your terminal and it allows some logic for doing different things based on either what you type or on some conditional stuff. So real quick I just want to let you know that there is lots of references out there for it. There are lots of little tutorials on their own and they're huge and I'm really not going to go any further than the very basics. So just FYI. Let's open up our make file and let's say we just want to get our program compiling with make file and how you call a make file is you just go to the directory and you type make it's probably gonna it yeah it does absolutely nothing it says make no target stop and make is a it's something you do have to install for your terminal so you if you're on like Linux or something you'll have to do sudo sudo apt get install make or yeah I'm typing it all wrong but you get the point so you do need to install it and for Sigwin the way you do that is you run the Sigwin installer executable and uh, when you get to the point where you're installing parts of uh, Sigwin and you'll be able to install it there alright well let's let's do our thing so you can define macros we're not going to talk about macros macros are basically variables you can define up at the top but really what you want to do is you want to give a name of something like uh, default or all or something like that and this is what will the very top one is what will run if you just type plain old make and it'll probably do nothing well I need to save it so this is the name of it so you can do make and it says nothing to be done for default because yeah I haven't done anything here but you can have other ones like uh, you can name them whatever different things you can target so you can do you can push different commands, you can save different commands. So by default, uh, just right, okay, to the right of this colon here is the thing it depends on. So it's going to check for these files being built and usually you want some sort of, well, we'll not get into that too much, but often you want to check if something exists and if it exists then you do a certain thing. So that's that's what this is for. But it's basically what's to the right of this is basically what it looks for to exist and it checks if they exist or not. So often you'll see like if you're building objects, if you're building like a main.o object and maybe a a uh, calc.o object, it'll look for those to exist and if they already exist then it'll 
then you'll have a, a target like this down here and if it doesn't already exist well it'll look at this one down here and check its dependencies and you'll have something like this and it looks at the timestamps so and it remembers those so if you do something like this and you're and you're building these objects separately which we're not at this moment I'm just kinda of showing you a quick example it'll look at this it'll see if main.cpp has been updated since last build and if it has it'll rebuild or it'll run the command under here and you use you use tabs so it would be like main dot and dash o to tell it what the build so you'll see something like this and there are fancier ways of doing this, but I don't want to make it too complicated. Okay, so you return you return down a line and then you tab over. If these are spaces right here, if it ends up your if your editor ends up putting in spaces, it's not gonna work. It's gonna throw a weird error. And this down below is what it runs in the command line if this has been updated. So if you've got a bunch of objects you're building, this can be really handy because it will only build the ones that have been updated and then it'll link them all together at the end. So you'll see something like this. So I haven't really talked about this uh, separate objects. We've just been compiling all our executables into one and just turning it into one. But in bigger projects, the standard is to uh, compile each CPP individually, turn it into its own object, and then link them together. So what this would do if you just type plain old make is it would look for main.o. If main.o doesn't exist, it'll go down here. Well, actually, I think it checks no matter what. If it, go, it goes down here, and if main.cpp has been updated since the last build, then it knows it needs to rebuild it and it will run this and then it goes to the next one and does the same thing it goes down here sees if this needs updated and then rebuilds it it also it also checks for the existence if these don't exist it just flat out runs it if they do exist it checks the timestamp on the cpp and sees if it needs built so this is so once you build up a chain of these you can uh, you can basically just type plain old make and it'll handle all the logic of what you need to rebuild and it can save you a lot of build time because rather than building everything you can only build the ones that were updated. hope that makes sense. Clean clean is a pretty typical thing to have too. Don't really need that one, don't really need that one. And usually what clean is is just a remove of all your previous objects. So it just, it just resets your project so you'll set a little Linux command there to delete your objects and delete your executable but we are keeping this so basic that we're not even going to do that stuff but that's we'll do this on part two I just want to introduce you to that because that's pretty critical for its flow all we really have is an object we have one a.exe right so we don't really need to do anything here we're just going to flat out compile it every time. We're not going to check any logic. That'll keep it as simple as it gets. So we're going to compile main.cpp and we're also compiling calculator. We're compiling this class. And we have a, what else do we have? We have helpers. Let's take a look at helpers. We're just going to, we don't want to actually go in there. Let's just look at it. And that's just the, the most basic command, the one we were running last time. So when we type plain old make, it'll run this. And as you see, it'll just build our program. And there we go. Let me know if you have any questions. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Keep on coding, guys. Remember, believe in yourselves. Don't get too involved in the crazy world. Just you know, stick to your craft. Be happy and uh, support the people around you. Take it easy.